I'm here today with Tim Weingarten, who's the CEO and co-founder of The Hunt, which is an incredible company. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, Tim, I'd love to talk to you about your life growing up as a kid. I know you grew up in the state of Maine. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, certainly my experience growing up is very different from my experience today living in California and Silicon Valley, building a startup and so forth. But I grew up in the middle, really in the middle of the woods um, in a little, little tiny town called Vienna. Most of our activities were outdoors, hiking and playing sports and so forth, cross-country skiing. Um, it was a great way to grow up. Oh, I bet, without a doubt. And then you went to the University of Pennsylvania? Yep. It was a great change, and it, what was really awesome about it was it gave me the opportunity, the platform, to end up um, in New York working in finance. Since I, had, I was in engineering, I took a path there that was a little bit unusual in that I was, went into equity research. And through that path, I was able to meet amazing entrepreneurs, amazing companies, and it gave me a lot of interest in, in shifting gears from um, sort of covering companies from a research perspective to being much more involved with them. And um, that's why I made the, the, the leap to move to California and join a venture capital fund. Well, listen, why you're here is to talk about The Hunt, your yep. new company, your new startup. Uh, it sounds incredibly cool. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so um, while I'm a guy that's in tech, I actually love to shop. I'm, I have sort of men's fashion, sort of a hobby and a passion of mine. You know, I used to be an avid um, user of Tumblr, and you would see on Tumblr all of these great shots. You know, maybe I see a, a great picture of a bunch of guys at a wedding, and I say to myself, that's an amazing tux. Where can I find that, that specific tux? Well, if you go off to Google and you try to describe in the, in, the, in the search box on Google the attributes of that tux, you will get back 100 million results, none of which are very useful. You just want two or three great suggestions of tuxes that match that photo and match your budget. Um, and so because of that pain, because of that frustration that, that I felt, that we felt as a founding team, we decided uh, that this was a problem worth trying to solve with technology. And what we basically did was we built a, a platform that would empower a community to come together, a community of avid shoppers, a community of sort of fashionistas, and empower the community to help each other shop. Meaning that sometimes the community is, some member of the community is posting that photo they saw. Other times, that same community member is helping somebody else find what that other person is looking for. And so um, by doing this uh, two-sided network, by building this this way, we uh, effectively are able to solve the problem of finding products that match photos without having to do the actual searching ourselves. Are there just a ton of people out there that are like, this is really cool, I want to, you know, this is a challenge and I'm going to help this person find the, the shirt or the jeans or the tuxedo? In a given week um, in our app, 15% of the community is helping each other by solving the hunts. Mm -hmm. So we don't exhibit the pattern that many user-generated content sites exhibit, which is that only 1% or less than 1% create all the content. That's the typical pattern of Yelp or TripAdvisor or any number of user-generated content sites. A very, very small percentage create all the content. On the hunt, it's very much different from that. You have, on a given week, about 25% of the audience of the users starting hunts, and you have about 15% that are solving hunts. How do you sort of see the application evolving uh, over time? I mean, do you see it uh, completely transforming the way that people shop? Yeah. So. Our, our, certainly our audience today, our user base is very young. It's highly female. It's 96% um, uh, female. So um, that's our core user base today. And m my view as an entrepreneur is that a big mistake you can make is trying to go too horizontal, too broad, too fast to be all things to all people because most entrepreneurs have um, you know, visions of grandeur and so you want to go after the biggest possible market opportunity in order to impress your investors and raise more capital and so forth. That usually ends up being a mistake, especially with these community-driven sites and these you know, user-generated content sites, because when a new member joins, if um, they don't feel like they belong, then they will probably churn and not be retained. And so, in my view, um, the best approach is to build, go deep and narrow, and really own a particular demographic segment and, and vertical of, of the economy. So, Tim, you've got some pretty interesting investors. You've got Tyra Banks and Ashton Kusher. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Have they been helpful with the company? It has. I mean, it, it all came together sort of serendipitously. Um, it, it, we didn't set out to say, you know, beyond the, the traditional Silicon Valley investors, we're looking to bring on influential sort of Hollywood investors. But through um, some folks we knew, some connections and so forth, we got introduced to um, this set of investors. And it just so turned out the first individual we met was Ashton Kutcher um, and his investment fund A-Grade. And it turned out with A-Grade, 
and Ashton in particular, that they had a lot of interest in sort of the social commerce sector. And when they came across us, they felt we were taking a very different approach, and they, and they inherently understood the problem we were solving. So Tim, what has been the most bizarre thing you've seen posted on the hunt so far? You know, our, our community, generally speaking, we don't have to police them. They're really good about using the hunt for what we sort of designed it for, which is finding products that match photos. And for the most part, that ends up being apparel. Then there's this 5% that's sort of off on the side that's like sort of bizarre and odd in, in some ways. And so as an example, I don't know if it's the most bizarre, but it, it always, I always find it to be really funny. Um, is that, and you remember our, our audience is, is all female, so girls will post pictures of, of, of basically cute guys and say, where can I find this guy? Ah. <laughs> and so, <laughs> I was joking around with my colleagues that we're becoming a dating site, but thankfully that's a very small percentage of the, of the hunts. I'd love to know what you look for when you're hiring. Certainly you're, lo you're looking for traits like somebody who's willing to take the kind of risk of joining an early stage startup who appreciates the equity as much as, you know, the equity ownership as much as the the salary compensation and so forth. But what you really need is somebody who not only is an expert in their field, say they're an amazing Objective-C engineer. Objective-C is the language you use for, you know, for iOS, for iPhone applications. Maybe they're an amazing engineer, but beyond being amazing in their field, do they fit in with the team? And, and really that means do they fit in with the culture of the company? We're extremely positive and optimistic. And a lot of that comes from the fact that our community is very positive. And so I think it goes hand in hand. And are they um, a self-starter? Are they um, individually driven so they don't need a lot of management? In a 20 person company, especially the one that we have built, we do not have any layer of, we're a very flat organization. Uh, and so we don't have directors and senior directors and VPs. We really don't even have titles. Everybody just has a role. Last question. You're presenting to the uh, graduating class of the University of Pennsylvania today. What sort of advice would you give kids? I think in, in my you know 15 odd years of, of, of my career, there's been nothing more rewarding than building a company. Um, the, 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 that being the path of entrepreneurship. Uh, the highs are so high. Now the lows are low. Uh, when an investor says no to you, when an employee, when a great engineer you're trying to recruit says no, I'm gonna join this other company, that really hurts. You look yourself in the mirror and you say to yourself, what did I do wrong? It feels so personal. Um, but the highs are incredibly high and when um, you meet somebody in a random occasion and they're using your product and they're happy with it and they love the value proposition or whatever, there's nothing that makes you more satisfied. And so I just think that emotional satisfaction is so valuable to power you through, to make you excited, to drive you to go, um, to go on and, and, and build something amazing. And so I would encourage students, all students, not just engineers, to follow the path of entrepreneurship and to go join startups and work on building new companies and, and new products and new technologies. I think that's great advice. Again, I'm here today with Tim Weingarten, who's the co-founder and CEO of The Hunt, an incredible company. Uh, Tim, I wish you great success. I think it's going to be a huge hit. Thank you. Appreciate it.